Hi folks, uh, my name is Jason. Uh, we're going to be looking at the scholarship on the question Song of Solomon. So we're going to be looking at a raft of scholars who have different opinions on this topic and I hope it stimulates you to think and to study the Bible and to look at it in a new way. So before we do that let's go to the Song of Solomon. Let's read a chapter and so let's come before the Lord and um, this is more mainly for people who, who want to think about this topic um, and it, it's not going to be an easy topic to think about because we're going to be looking at various uh, scholars uh, who, who have different ideas on this okay dear Lord we come before you today and we confess all our sin we confess our failure and we acknowledge Lord our weakness we acknowledge our corruption we acknowledge our vanity and pride and so father we come before you today and ask for your forgiveness and we ask for your cleansing and your mercy and Lord, we just pray as we look at your word that you would guide us and teach us and lead us into truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, let's turn to the Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine, because of the Saviour of thy good ointments, thy name is an ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into the chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. I am black, but comely. O oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedir, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me, because I am black because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flocks to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, Go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock, and feed thy kids beside the shepherd tents. I have compared thee, O my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. We will make thee borders of gold with studs of silver, while the king sitteth at his table, my spiking yard sendeth forth the smell thereof, the bundle of mirth is my well beloved unto me, it shall lie all night betwixt my breast. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of campfire in the vine vineyard of Enigedi. Behold thou art fair, my love, behold thou art fair, thou hast dove's eyes, behold thou art fair, my beloved, ye pleasant also, our, our bed is green, the beams of our house are cedar and our rafters of fire. So that's uh, Solomon chapter 1, Song of Solomon chapter 1. So how do we interpret the Song of Solomon? It's the, it's the story of a, a woman and they, they pursue each other and, and it's like this love poem. Uh, so how do we understand this love poem? Do we understand it allegorically? The rabbis and church fathers trace this method in the Talmud and the Mishnah and the Christian allegorists follow the New Testament tradition which they get from John 3.29 and Ephesians 22.23. This developed to make the bride the church. We have Origen, Jerome, Athanasius, Augustine and some medieval theologians saw saw um, the woman as Virgin Mary. Robert uh, Piefer said, the essential subjectivity 
of the method is its greatest drawback. So, sorry, R. K. Harrison says the the essential subject its greatest drawback. We turn to Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-two. Ephesians 5.22 Ephesians 5.22 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even the Christ is the head of the church, and he is the, the saviour of the body. So that's a key verse in the allegorical method, because the allegorical you see interpret the Song of Solomon will see that the woman and the man and the love story is all about Christ and the church. R.K. Harrison says another objection is all is all test of the from the Old Testament about his objection or some objection to the allegorical method he says another objection is the Old Testament such as Hosea chapter 1 to 3 is that when the male-female relationship is employed allegorically, it is clearly indicated as such were in the Song of Solomon no hint of such an approach. Other objections are Temple Longerman III, who a scholar has said has made the case that reading the Bible is really like sorry his critique of the allegorical method is is really the spiritual against the physical was a platonic kind of philosophy that Greek philosophers use the spirit spiritual and the allegorical method is basically a philosophical taking of platonic ideas that's Temple Longman's critique also, another critique is that ancient Near Eastern documents, Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Ugarit love poems clearly written to express love, which would indicate that's the best way to understand the text. There's also in modern studies the similarities between modern Arab webbing and customs, customs and the song bolsters the position that the song was itself focused on human love. Fourth, there is a new appreciation for the body in culture and even in religion. So it's not a case of the soul over the body, which would be a critique of the allegorical method. Another approach to the Song of Solomon is the dramatic approach. Delete characters the Solomon and Shulamite shepherdess the king falls in love took took the woman uh, to Zion lifted from physical to real love and talks about Solomon out of character as a shepherd in the Song of Songs in 1 7 so what he's saying is the dramatic approach is between a king and a shepherdess, a Shulamite. Diane Bergrant says about this, although there is very little storyline, the Song of Songs does contain elements of conflict and resolution and it celebrates the struggles and joys of you human love. So the dramatic approach sees that there are two characters and it's about love. The literal approach states that it is an erotic poem to understand in its plain and literal sense. This view was seen as heretical in AD 553. The question is do not the song's hyperbolic language, its striking metaphors and the carefully preserved anonymity of its male protagonist indicate that the literal imagery has figurative import to point beyond the surface level. Ronald E. Murphy or Khan. Four, we have the collection of wedding songs view. 
uh, the scholar Renan, uh, a um, French 19th century scholar, see similar saw similarities between Syrian wedding poetry. One writer says One writer, uh, G. Lloyd Carr, says, while the Song of Solomon does not even mention God, so it would indicate that it might be a collection of wedding songs. The fifth idea is the liturgical, that the Song of Songs had been derived from the liturgical rites of Adonis, uh, Tamut's cult, possibly more Phoenician than Egypt, This idea is improbable, says G. Lloyd Carr, because pagan. Uh, this idea of a kind of uh, coming from a Phoenician kind of cult. Uh, this idea would be improbable, bringing pagan literature, let's say, moral into Hebrew literature. The next view is the didactic moral moral view presents purity and wonder of true love historical teaches beauty and holiness of marriage love relationship that God provides R.K. Harrison off McKeel three passages in rabbinic, rabbinic text of the first and second centuries AD show that the natural literal meaning of the song was still at that time So what's the conclusion? Ronald E. Murphy O'Carm writes, In sum, recent critics have been unable to establish an objective exegetical basis for decoding the Song of Songs. The lines of patristic and medieval Christian exposition. So basically, modern scholarship has found it difficult to exegete the Song of Songs because it didn't re doesn't really understand what the nature of the literature is. So what we're left on the table is patristic and medieval interpretations. Otto Eisfeld says, the right understanding of the book depends to a most work degree of the form, how we see the structure of it. Robert Pryfer says, the pastoral atmosphere pervading the book does not signify that the, the poem wants genuine examples of ancient Israelites for poetry. They are far too sophisticated and elaborate. My thoughts is that the Song of Solomon should be interpreted from an allegorical perspective. My thought is that the Song of Solomon, when you see the man pursuing the woman and the woman pursuing the man, is a picture of the church. My argument for this is based on the Lord Jesus' teaching. When he was on the road to Emmaus, he, he says he expounded from the law and the prophets concerning himself. And everything... So the Old Testament Song of Song, Song of Solomon points to Christ, and I believe it's pointing to the love of Christ for his church. And I think all these other critical scholars are wrong, and I think the early church fathers are correct in their interpretation. Uh, some resources that you can go and look at from a more popular level that will help you if you type in Stuart Olliot and know your Bible, you might find some sermons of his on the Song of Solomon called Why A Life Worth Living. You can also uh, go to the Evangelical Press and purchase 
Stuart Olliot's commentary on the Song of Solomons. It's worth its weight in gold. It's an absolute brilliant uh, book. You can also and buy uh, commentaries from them, uh, classic commentaries on the Song of Solomon. I would also go to Sermon Index, type in Song of Solomon, see what you can find there, and Sermon Audio. Um, and if you go on Monogism, see if you can find any lectures and talks there. So don't forget, Stuart Ollier is the man to go to as a Bible teacher and pastor. His book on the Song of Solomon is absolutely outstanding. And his sermons on the Song of Solomon also will help you. And I think the book and the sermon series are a wife, a life worth living. And you can find his website called it's called Know Your Bible. Uh, so type in Stuart Olliot Know Your Bible. So that's the Song of Solomon. Read the book and to study it. And I hope that I've stimulated you to think about what is the book of Song of Solomon all about. Go and have a read of it and study it yourself. Okay. Have a look at sermon uh, outlines of the Old Testament books by David Pawson uh, on YouTube you'll be able to find him giving talks on on the Bible and I think he does an overview of the Song of Solomon so have a look at that that will be a blessing and also go to through the Bible uh, website and Vernon McGee um, will have done a series on the Song of Solomon that will be a blessing to you so happy study and let's close in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for your love and your grace and care. And I just pray that this video would be a blessing to people, a help to people, an encouragement to people. I just pray that you would use this for your glory in your name. Amen. So this was not a Bible study. This was more of a scholarly repertoire, giving you some of the scholarship on the Song of Solomon, some of the ideas that scholars have been saying, and I've just given you then my own opinion of what I believe the Song of Solomon is all about. And you can find that in detail with Stuart Ollier. So type in Stuart Ollier and go and buy the book, A Life Worth Living, and go and study it, and then read the book as well, and listen to his sermons, and you'll be blessed, I promise you. God bless you, and thank you for listening.